Hello everyone, this is Hank. I'm back for another episode. Today we are going to talk about the R6 autofocus options. Okay, um, a word of warning, this is going to be a long video, but I, I'd rather do a long video to explain to you in details what you may want to know. I'm going to try to put links in the description so that you can jump around to the spots that you would be interested in. Okay, now uh, with that, we'll, we'll start out with um, the, the two uh, AF, they call it AF method and AF operation, and we'll, we'll explore that. So there's a couple ways to get in it. I'll show you the, the on-screen way to, to get at it. Is uh, first you press the Q button, okay? and use the joystick to go up to that and of course you look down the bottom there and you see that that right now I have it set to face plus tracking and when you press the info you can enable the eye detection there okay or you can go to spot which is one little spot where you want a precise focus and then you can go to one point one point is larger than the spot but it's relatively small in the scheme of things. Okay, and then <clears throat> then you have center point with the expanding area. And this is really good for action shooting, birds in flight and stuff. And even better is the... I'm sorry, I waited too long. Do that again. So uh, this one's, instead of just four points, it's like eight surrounding points. And that, in my opinion, is the best one for birds in flights and, and action and stuff like that. The only catch is that, well, you could move it around, but the only catch is that usually start in the middle. So um, so you got to kind of worry about that. Okay, and then um, the other three, as I mentioned, uh, why don't I change that? Go to the menu, okay, um, and you go to the, limit AF methods. I'm going to activate them for now. Normally I turn them off. Okay. Okay, so now when I go back and I press this, now I have access to it. Zone AF, you know, when you activate it, you, you got the square in the middle. And, and when you press the AF button, it will choose something within that box. Okay, similarly, go here, and instead of a square box in the middle, it's a vertical box, like that. Or you can go to a horizontal box, right? The choice is yours. I recommend that you don't use those modes because they are fully automatic. You have very little control. My favorite um, uh, AF operation is this one. And I will explain why, okay? Because, like, if, if you take a picture of a person, it'll, it'll pick the eye and the face immediately for you, okay? And if you don't like that, you can uh, press the AF point selection button, which is like the one on the far right, upper far right, and it looks like a window. And then you can switch, switch the eye and face and so on and so forth. Yeah. So that's basically how you do that. Okay. And you can focus. Press set to go back to this auto uh, eye detection tracking. All right. So, and when I take pictures of landscape, I can use it too because this is face plus tracking, right? So tracking... Um, wherever I want to focus, I just use my finger tap on the screen. Even though I'm using EVF, I can do that with the, the option set that later I'll talk to you about. Uh, and so you can do that. So 95% of the time I live on this mode and I don't really need to go anywhere else. Now the only time that I would deviate from it is when I take action pictures. So I normally just go to this mode here, okay, and then I take pictures of birds and stuff like that later. 
and show you how to no on a different video I'm going to show you how to set up the back button focus double back button focus and quickly switch from like the mode that I prefer which is the face plus tracking one shot to uh, this uh, eight, eight surrounding point center point with the eight surrounding AF expanding area and servo with just a touch of the button I can show you that in a different video um, but anyway with that now I'm going to go back and I'm going to set it back to this normal okay so we basically done talking about the AF method um, now the next topic is that we are going to talk about AF operation. Okay, with the R6, there's only two. Um, the R6 II got three. It's got AI focus in the middle, but this one has only got two. Okay, so you can choose between one shot and servo, and I will show you a little bit of a difference between the two to to make sure that that you see the difference just in case you haven't. I, I kind of know that you got it already, but uh, just in case. Okay, so so with the one shot, okay, so uh, with with this face plus tracking, it automatically will pick an eye, right? Okay, so if you like that, you press focus, right? So now it is focusing. As long as you hold it down, okay, it will lock that focus point. Okay, so now let's suppose I want to, to recompose this picture. I, I, I want to move it like this, okay? Now, because I keep holding it down, okay, the focus was originally here. And imagine that if I move here and the point of focus is behind. Now, if I didn't lock it, okay, then, then, then I press the shutter button it'll refocus and then it focused in the back. Okay, so it defeat the purpose. So the, the one shot allows you to lock focus. Not only lock focus, but it also lock exposure for you. Okay, so it's very useful for one shot. Taking pictures of non-moving objects, recompose, that sort of thing. Okay, so now now I'm going to switch over to servo mode. Oops, sorry. Switch over to servo. Okay, servo, again, with the face plus tracking, you still pick up the same eye. Now I hit the AF button. One thing that you notice right away that instead of a green square, it became a blue blue signify servo, green signify one shot. Okay, and you don't hear the beep either because in servo mode it doesn't beep. But it tells you that it is in focus, right? So the difference now is that if I move it, guess what happened is it's continue to track that eye. It locks onto that eye. See the difference? So in this mode you cannot Focus and recompose. You can't really do it. Well, yes, you can, but but yeah, uh, it the the point is, it just luck on that eye. So now imagine, obviously I'm moving the camera because the picture doesn't move. But imagine these are moving people or moving objects and stuff like that. Okay. So as long as I hold down the focus button or the shutter button for those that use the front focus button, um, it will continue to track even though that, that object is moving sideways, horizontally, vertically, or away from me or toward me. It will keep the lock on it. And that is what servo do. It's in the servo loop. It is continuously driven to, um, as a matter of fact, uh, Nikon used the term continuous AF uh, to describe servo. And that, that creates some 
confusion with the continuous AF that the R6 has. It has nothing to do with the, with the Nikon continuous AF, which means servo. Okay, so... Um, all right, so th those are the fundamental difference between um, one shot and servo. Okay, enough said now. From now on, I'm going to spend the rest of the time talking about different AF options in the menu. Okay, so so you you press the uh, the menu button, and you can use the the multi-purpose uh, dial, which is the horizontal round dial uh, just above the AF on button. And then you can switch among the different categories. Okay. In our case, we want AF, uh, magenta AF one. Of course, there's like five submenu. And they're quite lengthy, and I'm I'm going to go through all of them. That's why it's going to be a really long video, for that matter. Okay, so we are going to start out with the very first one for the number one AF1. It's called AF operation. Earlier I showed you how to switch it uh, on the screen, right? You can switch it here as well. And, and it's kind of a little bit backward from the display there. So so instead of the AF method on top, um, you got AF operation first. So you can switch between one shot and servo here. You can do it as well. Or you can do it on screen on the other method. Okay, the next one would be AF method where you can choose any of these. Okay, here. Okay, subject to detect. Okay, this, there, there are a bunch of modes that it will detect people or animal or vehicles, and I will talk a little bit more about that. But right now, um, it is important to understand, like, if you go here, you can see that right now there's, like, eight different methods, right? of uh, AF. Okay? Now, the people detection and the eye detection, uh, actually, the eye detection only work with the face plus tracking. Right? But the face detection is going to work with face plus tracking, obviously, and these three, zone AF, zone AF vertical, and zone AF horizontal, okay? These four, face tracking and eye detection doesn't work at all. Okay, so keep that in mind. Okay, so this subject to detect is only work for the four things, the face plus tracking and the three horizontal, vertical, and um, the boxes there. Okay, so now back to this one. Subject to detect uh, defaults people, and most of the time you take pictures of people, so it's a good idea to keep it there. Okay, and then when you shoot animals, you can switch over to here. Right now, uh, depending on the cameras, the R6 uh, only detects three kinds of animals. Okay, cats, dogs, and birds, and only a certain kind of birds to not all of them. But when it detects them, it'll, it'll frame them, and then when it sees the eye and you have eye detection enabled, it will focus on the eye, okay? And then the third one is that it will detect vehicles. Vehicle, the way that it is designed, is that it will detect race cars, okay? It will detect race motorcycles, and it will detect dirt bikes, okay? Um, because those are the photography events that are very popular, race cars, race motorcycle, 
dirt bikes jumping and stuff like that. Okay, so it will detect that. But because most cars are similar to the race cars, it will also detect the cars. Sometimes trucks too because it see the wheels. But that's not guaranteed, okay. Right? So now you notice under vehicle if you go to animal you, the info data down there don't appear, right? So, but in vehicles, it said that if you press info, you can do spot protection. So let's explore that. So you hear you have a um, choice of enabling or disabling the spot detection. What exactly is a spot detection, you may ask? Because it is assuming that uh, a race environment, especially with motorcycle, it expects the motorcycle list to wear a helmet. So spot detection is designed to detect the helmet. Okay, so so if you enable that, it'll grab the helmet first. It's focus on that. Okay? So if it doesn't see the helmet, and then it'll look for the wheels and stuff like that. Okay. Um, it will work with the cars with the people, hopefully, um, it is designed to detect helmets better than, but human heads are fairly round. It might pick that up, okay? So it's a good idea to enable that. Okay, of course, you have a choice of detect none of them, but I'm not really sure why you would want to do that. I can't think of a scenario why you would want to do none as a choice. Okay, but I think... It's a good idea to just leave it to people default. By the way, if you have people, right, theoretically, if it can't find people, and then it'll switch over to looking for animals and, and, and cars. But um, it doesn't always work. So it's a good idea when you take pictures of people, switch to people, take Take pictures of cars, switch to cars, vehicles, and um, animals, switch to animal. Okay? Eye detection, if you disable it here, eye detection is not going to work. Okay, this continuous AF is the point of confusion for the people who are used to Nikon uh, because they use, Nikon use continuous AF to describe silver mode. Okay, this continuous AF has nothing to do with silver mode. It has everything to do with auto focus that the camera will do without your having to push anything. You don't have to push the uh, focus button or anything like that. Okay, it'll do it all the time. So normally I recommend that you turn it off because it drains the battery and it's pretty annoying. The only application that I could think of is when you want to take a picture of yourself or with you in the picture and you set it to 10 second timer. Okay, normally you have to pre focus that because it doesn't really do the focus for you, right? Just take the picture. But if you have continuous AF and, and especially you are by yourself, and you can go out there and with the the uh, subject to detect is people and eye detection enable. It will grab your eye and it will focus there, okay, automatically without your doing anything. So that's the only scenario that I could figure it out. Now, I don't do much movie. I'm not really sure what that movie Servo AF do. I think it, it do a continuous AF to the last time I just tried, but, but uh, don't quote me because I might be wrong on that. Now, this touch and drag AF setting, okay, is kind of very interesting. And the choice is either you enable it or disable it. I highly recommend you enable it. Um, when you enable it, you can do certain things. Obviously, if you use the LCD to take picture, then you just touch the screen, right? touch and drag and do whatever you need. But but what is so good about this is that for those of us that prefer to use the EVF all the time, 
Okay, you can still use the LCD screen to move the target or designate the target. So using EVF and be able to use LCD, how cool is that, right? Okay, so the next thing is that once you decide to do that, you have to figure out there's like two positioning methods. Okay, one is called absolute and the other one relative. To be frank, I try both and I, I could barely tell the difference, but uh, from the, the documentation that I was able to find, the absolute, okay, for example, you think about moving your focus point from A to B, right? You can drag and if you want to, if you want to, if you use the absolute method, okay, so like that you go halfway and then you slip or something and then you stop. Now with the absolute, you can pick up where you left it and move it to B. So A to is something in the middle and then from something to the middle, move to B. So you can interrupt in between. Now, if you set it to relative, theoretically, you can't do that. If you slip, okay, your your destination B now is the new B. Now, let me call it the B plus. So the B plus is now your point. And, and you have to, like, pick the B plus and move it to B again, and you got to do it one fell soup, otherwise you're going to have another target somewhere in the middle. So with that definition, absolute is better. So I recommend just put it to absolute. If you don't like it, switch it back. But I've been using absolute, and I'm just fine with it. Okay, now active touch area is when you're using the EVF especially, you will find that most of the time your nose is going to touch part of the screen, right? And when you have this thing activated or enabled, your nose is going to touch the screen and, and the screen thinks that that is where you want to put the focus point. It's very annoying. So, if you just test and see where your nose normally rests, in my case, it's on the left side. Okay, so that's why I'm setting my, my touch to the right. So my nose never touched the right part of it. Okay, so therefore, when I touch the right, that's because I want to, not because my nose mistakenly th was thought as a finger. So, so that's why you have different choices depending on where your nose is. Okay, so you can set that. In my case, I choose half right, right there. Okay, so we're done with number one. Move to number two. Number two. Gladly, that is a lot shorter, but still, there's a, some uh, explaining to do. So focus most default is AF, right? So you have a choice between switching to AF and MF. You may wonder why do I even need it here, but the fact is that most of the the uh, Canon uh, lenses have a AF MF switch on the lens, and if you have one of those, you, you don't need to use this ever. But some lenses now uh, don't even have this switch. So if it doesn't have the switch, um, you kind of have to use the menu, and this is what this is for, okay? You switch to AF. Now the MF peaking setting is unique to um, the mirrorless cameras. The DSLR, for some reason, cannot do that or something. But anyway, MF peaking is like when you are in manual focus, right? And when you focus on it, when it get near or at the focus part, the there will be a color. It will light up a color to show you where the focus is. Okay, so so it really helpful. You can turn the the dial, the focus ring quick, 
And as soon as you see the car the where you want it to be, you stop and you're done. Okay, so you don't have to like strain your eyes and look. And that is called MF picking, and you can set either on or off level, either high to low. I recommend just leave it on high, and you can set the color to red, yellow, and blue, depending on which one make the most sense to you. I just happen to like the blue, so so I use blue. But there's no other reason than that. Now I heard that the color lo- blind people see yellow better than red and blue, so therefore. Um, they might want to try the yellow. Okay, the next one is another guide, another help for the the manual focus crowd. Okay, it's called Focus Guide. It's not available to all cameras, but I know the R6, R5, even the R has it. Right? So it's in the form of like three triangles, and they come together and turn green. Uh, signifying that you are in focus when you're manually focusing. So that helped a lot. And you can have both of them turn on and it will show you both methods. So double uh, the fun. Okay. So I recommend that you turn this thing on as well. Okay. Now the AF assist beam firing is for the help of focusing when it's really dark outside. You cannot focus, it needs some light, right? Either you take a flashlight and light, shine up the area to help it, or you can use a flash and have a built-in pattern, and that will help. Or the R6 has a built-in LED when it needs to, and if you activate it by enabling either the first option, enable on like that, or the third option, and... When it needs to, it'll turn that one on. Okay. Now, mind you, this is a little bit off topic, just a, a tad bit, but there's a lot of problem with the flash focus pattern being able to use. The mirrorless, Canon mirrorless, doesn't use it very well. It, it has something to do with not having a dedicated focus sensor. So so it has a lot of trouble with that. Okay, now I haven't tested it with the OEM flash. I think I did, but I don't remember, so I can't be sure. But I know that my Gardox and my Yongnuo flash, okay, the, the laser beam, the infrared, um, Focus beam doesn't work at all with the R6. Okay. Uh, and it had something to do with R6 being a mirrorless. But the LED assist is really good. Don't have any problems. So you don't really need to use a flash just for focus aiding. Okay. Okay. So, so either turn the first one or the third one on to use LED. I just turn it enable just in case some flash would work with it, but don't count on it. All right, so we're done with number two. Number three is only applicable to servo AF. So when you're in one shot, uh, the camera will ignore the setting here. Okay, when you're in servo, you're taking action. So. <clears throat> the first choice is what they call a versatile multi-purpose case one. And that is good for 95% of the cases. So when in doubt, you just put it on case one, shoot away. Okay, You can't go wrong with case one. But in some scenario, you may want to tweak it a little bit. And that is when we have case two, three, four. Okay, so case two is when... You want to lock on to a target, like say, if if I I see a few ducks walking around, right? So one of the duck is particularly colorful, and I wanted to track that duck, and I wanted when the duck was eating something or flying or jumping or doing whatever, then I would take the picture. So I'm tracking it, but I'm not taking pictures. I'm tracking it. 
Okay, so now if there's another duck walk by and it happened to be closer to the duck that I'm tracking, there's a good chance that if you're using case one or some other case, it will switch over to the duck that is closer. Okay, so if you don't really want it to switch readily, then you use case two. Okay, you, you can even decrease the tracking sensitivity down to what I had there, which is all the way to the left on that minus sign, to make sure that it doesn't switch. Okay, so case two is like when you don't want to switch the target, you're tracking one target, you want to stay there, use case two, right? Okay, case three is completely opposite of case two. It's like when you want it to switch really quick, you use case three. Okay, scenario would be like if <coughs> you are taking pictures of a snowboarder or a skier that's jumping over a hill, right? So you can't see the, the skier at all until he or she comes over the hill. So what most people do, myself included, would be I pre-focus on the hill. But I fully expect that when the skier jump over that thing, it switch over to the skier because I really wanted the skier to be in focus, not the hill. Okay, so in this case, number three, it, it will readily, it detects something moving and it go and grab that. It changed it on you and that's what you want. So case three is for that. Okay, Case four is just like case three except that it is less dramatic. Okay, it's only good if if you see when the skier come in, uh, you have like a scene that nothing moving, all of a sudden something is moving fast, and that is an Excel D cell tracking, right? So you have some acceleration there coming in the screen, and, and case 4 is going to grab that. Okay, but case 3 is better than case 4 because it has both. Okay, so so that's how that works. Okay, and of course, with um, the R6, uh, you have this auto, they call it case A, A for auto, right? So when you choose this one, what you're telling the camera to do is like when you're in servo, it will look at the motion of your subject and it will decide on which case to use. So it will pick either one or two or three or four, depending on what it thinks your subject is doing. Okay, so that's automatic. I never try automatic. I would know how well it works. If you want, you can try it and see how well it works. Um, I normally just use case two because I I want to track one target and one target only. That's the way that I like to take my pictures. But your mileage obviously may vary. Okay, so now we're done with number three. We move on to number four. Number four is a whopper. Okay, so lens electronic MF. Okay. You have an option here, and the caveat is like your lens have to have electronic MF, meaning that there's no mechanical linkage. Okay. Uh, you can tell whether or not your lens has mechanical linkage by if you turn the focus ring, uh, even with the lens itself, especially with the lens by itself, right, not connected to the camera. And if the, the focus ring keep rolling around freely, then you know that you have an electronic MF lens. There's no mechanical linkage. If there's mechanical linkage, um, the lens is going to get longer or shorter depending on what direction you do because that's just when you focus, that's what happened, right? So lens get longer or shorter. So if, if it doesn't do anything, then you have an electronic. And this option here only works when you have an electronic MF lens. Okay, all RF lens got electronic MF. Some EF lens has it. Some don't. The older ones have mechanical linkages, and you can't use this option. This option is pretty neat. Let me show you. Okay. So jump ahead. If you want to use this option, 
I'm going to skip to number five because you, you need to know this. But if you want to use this option, first you got to go to number five and go to the bottom okay, and make sure it turns on because this is a master switch. You got to turn this one on in order for the other option to work. Okay. So once you turn that on and you go in here, the default is disabled after one shot. Okay, but that is not an interesting one. That that doesn't really do anything for you. The next two is what interesting. Right? Now let's jump to the the last one first because it's easy. It's like if you don't want any of this, you just disable this. Okay, so this is very similar to the one in uh, page five. That's a master switch. This is another switch to turn it off. Okay, but what is interesting is this one shot enable and one shot enable magnify. And I will show you, it won't work with everything, but it will work enough to show you the uh, cool effect that you have with this. So the first one is one shot enable. Once you do this, okay. What it will allow you to do is like while in autofocus AF, you can switch over to manual focus. Okay, and then take the picture after you manually focus it while you're in AF so you don't have to turn off it on the lens or on the menu. Give an example this one, right? So, I autofocus, right? But I wanted to make sure that maybe I should manual focus. I don't trust it or whatever reason, right? And I can hold it down, don't release it, and then turn the focus ring. And you see that it's flashing MF telling you that, hey, I'm, I'm manually focused. And then it turn on the focus guide because you already activate focus guide. It show you okay. Right now manually you focus manually and you are right on. Okay. Now the MF picking doesn't work when I hooked the camera up to the computer. That part of it, because it it just cannot show both the computer image and that. So the MF picking doesn't work. But if you don't hook it up to the computer, the focus guide and the focus picking work at the same time. So that's pretty neat. Okay? So that's how you do manual focus. You let go and then no more. Right? Go back to AF. So that is the first option. Now, the second option is instead of the focus guide what it will do is it switch over to a magnification default is five times okay and i i will show you at first it won't work and i will explain why it won't work and then the second time it will work let me show you both because if you run into it you know what to expect and you don't panic right so you choose this one okay so same thing okay Note that right now, what I have is the face plus tracking, correct? Now, the hint is that the face plus tracking, the magnified glass does not work in face plus tracking. So if you're using face plus tracking, it's not going to work. And it will go back to the first option, or the second option, rather. Show you focus guide. Okay, so... Or maybe it won't even show you anything depending on how it, it wants to deal with you. So I focus, hold it down, turn the focus ring. Because you you can see that you can see that the focus guy work, but it doesn't magnify. Okay, because 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 of what? Because I'm in face plus tracking. And the magnifying version doesn't work. So that's why it's still showing me this. Right? Okay, so so that explains why 
it doesn't magnify because face plus tracking it doesn't so okay let's change it so I go in here and I go to this and I change it to something else oops you can change it to anything but the face tracking and what would like say I change it to this right so now now I'm going to focus I don't bother to move it around I can't move and I'm hooked up to the computer anyway. That part doesn't work. It, see, now when I turn the focus ring, guess what? It magnified it five times. Now, if you have enough fingers and hand and stuff like that, you can press the magnifying glass button uh, just below the AF on button and it will switch to 10x further define it, but I just don't have enough room to. to to push that thing to show you, but take my word for it. So you can, but that is how you focus, and of course you can take a picture, right? Take a picture, and um, you know that it's going to be perfect. All right, so that is how those two work. Okay, pretty neat. All right, okay, this one shot release thing is kind of interesting in the old days when before they give you this option okay in one shot if the camera doesn't focus or thinks that it doesn't focus well then it won't let you take a picture until it's achieved focus you can't take a picture of even if you wanted to okay that's always been the case now they give you an option if if for whatever reason you want it a blurry picture but you catch the moment rather than get a perfectly focused one but the moment's already gone like say some action right some the fish uh, swoop down caught uh, I mean the bird swoop down caught the fish for example but if it's out of focus then why do you even bother having picture that's debatable I can see a scenario if you are a journalist and you're taking pictures of some important event and something really unique happened. And you would rather get a blurry moment than not at all, right? So so and then in that case you switch you switch it to release like that and choose it. But in my case I want everything in focus, so I'm gonna choose that. Okay, switching track subject has a little bit to do with that case 2, remember? So if I like case 2 so much, then I would switch to 0 in this case, like I did here, because I don't want to switch the subject. And, and this one is applicable um, not just for servo, but also for everything. So, so this is similar to the other case, but the case only work with servo, right? This one work with one shot as well. Okay, lens dry when AF impossible. This one, you may not ever run into it. Depending on the camera, some camera, the default is off. I think the R6, the default is on because Canon learned something. And what they learn is that if you have it off, like some cameras, the default is off. Okay, when you're taking pictures, especially with a telephoto lens, right? where the depth of field is really short. You, for example, if you take a picture of something close, say 10 feet, okay, and then after you get that shot and you're waiting for another shot, and like say a bird from far away, 100 feet away, start flying at you and you say, oh, that's great. So, so you raise it up and you try to focus on that bird. And if you have the stop focus search off, the chances that the camera does nothing, it doesn't focus at all. The reason is because when you focus close and you try to focus like from 10 feet to 100 feet, now the image that the camera saw, and you too, is like completely blurred. Blurred to the point that the camera doesn't know which way to turn. Should I turn left or turn right? to focus. It, it doesn't know, and neither do you, right? 
So you either, number one, either you hunt around, you go left first, and left, get it, more blurry, and then you go right, right? Or vice versa. Yeah, but the camera, if if you said stop, focus, search, so it said, man, this is a lot of work, and it just it it just stop focusing. It doesn't do anything, and they expect you to help it by turning it manually. Some point it will say, okay, now I can see something, and then it will will uh, continue to focus. But the effect is that if that happens, and you don't know what's going on. You're going to miss that shot. Okay. I missed quite a few shots before I discovered this. So always turn this one on. It may hunt a little bit, but then you don't lose a shot. Okay, so turn that on. Whenever you see that it, it just won't focus, you know it's because of this. The first thing you want to look is like make sure this thing's on. Okay, limit AF method is this, okay, by default, all eight of them are, are on. Okay, you notice, like, the third one, you, you cannot turn it off. That That is always active. But seven of them, you can turn it off. For example, in my case, I normally don't use these three, so I would turn these three off. So next time, I don't have to cycle through the ones I don't care about. Okay, so now it's got the asterisk to tell me that. You change something there. Okay. Now this AF method selection control is kind of a little known thing. And it's kind of inconsequential in my personal opinion. But okay. So the default is MFN. You you change the AF method by pressing MFN button, or you have a choice of change it to the main dial. Okay. So, so what it does, like you, you see the um, the window symbol there, so that tells you a lot. It tells you that this thing is only work when you use that window button to to change. Uh, if you change it by other means, it doesn't really matter. Okay, let me kind of show you the MFN there. Okay, so I get out now. If I want to change the AF method. I can press the M. Um, first, I'm going to press the uh, window button there. It's called the AF point selection button. Press that. And then you see the choices. It, it show up at MFN. And then you press the MFN button to change it. Okay. If you change to the, the main dial and then you use a vertical dial instead of MFN button, and it will tell you there. And that's all it does. Okay. Okay, now orientation linked AF point. Okay, this one gives you a choice that if you use the same initial focus point for both, meaning that most of the time we shoot horizontal rates. Once in a while, especially for portrait, you want to put it to vertical so that you can take the whole body shot. Right, without getting the picture too small. But but if you have the same focus point, normally for horizontal, the focus point of the face is normally in the middle. Um, but 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 when you go vertical, the eye is way up top, and so you have to move the focus point, and and sometimes that takes too much time, right? So you can like separate the two focus points, and you can define a point up high for the vertical. So when you do vertical, it's already very close to the eye. Now, of course, if you use uh, face plus tracking, you don't really care because it will go to the eye anyway. So it doesn't really matter what you have here. But in case you, you don't use a face plus tracking, then this is a way that you can do it faster. Okay, I recommend that choosing number two. Okay, so number five, we already talked about the last item, electronic full-time MF. If you want any of that to work, this thing has to be on. We already talked about that. So let's go back to this one. Now this one, initial servo AF point, and only work for servo mode, obviously. So you have a choice of auto or initial AF point set for face tracking that you can define. 
or you can get the focus point that you had for one of those four modes. Normally, if you switch between one mode or the other, and a lot of people switch between like the eight point expansion and the face tracking, I do that all the time, switch back and forth. If, if, if I want to keep the initial focus point for the eight point expansion, for example, for the face tracking, I can do that. But in my experience, uh, auto is better because auto, and you have people automatically go to the eye. The other one, you kind of have to physically change it before I do something because it's already got a focus point that you define, which I find is very inefficient. But apparently some people like it, you know. Canon makes all kinds of choices for all kinds of people. We are all different, and no choice is bad or good. It's depend on whether or not you like it or not. So so that is basically, I, I just put that on auto. Okay, focus ring rotation, most of us can ignore it, except if you are going from, like, say, Nikon, and now you decide to try Canon, right? Nikon focus ring orientation is backward from Canon or vice versa. You know, the Nikon will say that Canon is backward. Okay, but if you switch from Nikon to Canon and it happened to be an electronic MF, remember we talked about that at length, electronic MF, and then you can reverse the direction to match what you used to if you come from Nikon, okay? Most of us Canon people, we always rotate one way, so you, we don't need to mess with that. Okay, when you're using RF lens and you do a manual focus ring, right, uh, you can just flip it. If you choose the default here, you can flip it. If you flip it fast, it's going to rotate fast. If you flip it slow, it'll rotate slow. And if you don't like that, you can choose a fixed rotation degree as you roll it. So it's more predictable, but it's slower. Okay, I like fast, so I choose this one. It's up to you. Okay, similarly, there's a you can change the joystick sensitivity. Um, and the choice is like the default is at zero. And if you want slower, you do minus. And you want faster, you do plus. And I like anything fast. So even though I talk slow and my video is slow, but when I do these things, I, I like it fast. So I change it to fast. But that is just a preference. Okay, and then we talked about this already. And with that, okay, we have concluded all of the AF options um, that we talk about at length. And the video is 53 minutes long, so that's way too long. So as promised, uh, later I will make another video that talk about my back button focus. And I use two back button focus, one for the air, in the f uh, face plus tracking, in the one shot as a default for my AF on, and then I use another button. Um, when I press it, it focuses, but using the eight point expansion and switch to servo and switch to case two for me automatically. So it's very fast. I can show you that, but but that is another video. If if I tag it onto this one, it's like way too long. Okay, so with that, I thank you very much. If you haven't, give me a like and or a subscription. Really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Bye now.